Good morning, traders from all around the world. This is Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading. We're doing absolutely fantastic. It's it's early. There's already a, there's already a packed full house here. I'm loving it. Got Brad Reed on the ones and twos, helping hold it down, answer all of your questions. Got trading royalty in the house, Mr. Victor Gonzalez, all the way from Puerto Rico. How's it going, Victor? Big Owls here. All right, my boy, my main man, Dennis Kennedy. <laughs> Dennis, you're up early, man. <laughs> Glad to have you here, dude. As always, Dave, welcome. Mr. Guarco, Mr. Larry from Canada, Lisa Hartman. How are you, Lisa? Nolan. A lot, a lot of new traders, a lot of new faces. This is a great day. As you guys all know, this is an open house week for real life trading. We very rarely do this uh, for a few reasons, mostly because we give everything else for free. And there's a lot of value in the room. We make a lot of money on a monthly and yearly basis. So we figured, hey, every now and then uh, we'll do one of these. So really tell all of your friends and or trading buddies if you want. There's still plenty of time to get them in this room. It's all the way until Friday. And it is both the morning room and the trading room uh, in the afternoon. And the reason I say that, you can invite as many as you want. Um, we're probably not going to have another one of these until July. So half a year away. So for those of you who want to check it out, today is a great day to check it out. Um, today is also just happens to be what we refer to as Mentorship Monday. And Mentorship Monday is a day... Uh, the very first Monday of every month. So we do it every single calendar month, the first Monday of the trading day uh, that the market's open. That Monday, we do what's called Mentorship Monday, and it really is a breakdown of what we do step by step. We get it very, very simple. We go a little bit slower than usual, uh, answer a lot of questions. Today is literally built for questions, Mentorship Monday, the first Monday of the month. So if you have a question for me, if you have a question for Brad, if you have a question about trading, if you have a question for Dennis Kennedy, let us know. Whatever your questions are, truly though, just, just let us know how we can help. Type them in, don't be afraid. If you wanna do a private question you, or, or just wanna to talk to us privately, you can say, hey, can someone private chat with me? And we can do that as well. I just wanna let you guys know this is a 100% no judgment. This is a judgment-free zone, all right? Judgment-free zone, ask a question if you have one. Today is the day that we're, it's built for it. I've told all my other veteran traders like Karen, um, you know, hey guys, today is gonna be, the, you know, these are the days where a lot of new traders are joining us. They're gonna have a lot of uh, questions and just be prepared for that. But the rest of the month, we go hard in the paint. We, we put up some points. So just letting you guys know, if, if you have any questions, today's a great day to ask, I'm happy to help. All right, so what do we do first? Well, it is 8.03 a.m. my time. This is the only time in the world I'm ever up this early. <laughs> Just kidding. But this is definitely the first time in a few days I've been up this early. I hope you all had amazing uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year, holiday celebrations, and you're excited to be trading. Uh, we had the last two weeks off because of low volume and trips and vacations. But again, got a packed house today. This is great. Hope you all had a great time. So what I'm gonna to discuss today is really kind of my flow slash the flow of the morning room. Uh, Mr. Bradley Reed does the morning, so you'll hear his beautiful voice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, and then I come in around 11 Eastern uh, for two hours, so 11 to one, um, oh, is that right? No, 12 to two Eastern, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So you guys will hear, you'll hear me all week, don't worry. I'll be here. I'll be here all week, folks. I just want to talk about our form and what we do, what we look at, the types of gaps that we look for, the types of trades that we look for, um, and what I specialize in uh, in the morning in the morning room. So first and foremost, what I do is I build a watch list. I don't think that's very unique. I think most people out there build a watch list. I don't think that's something that's like, whoa, Newsome, that's crazy. So this is our watch list that we build based on what's gapping. So if I'm day, when I'm day trading, uh, which I do, uh, obviously, Monday through Friday, pr pretty much every day that the market's open, we, I day trade, I look for gaps. And the reason I'm looking for gaps is because gaps provide the most edge, right? Gaps scare people, they frighten people. People wake up, they see something's down 2%, they don't know why, and they react emotionally. Uh, so my 
truly, if I have a job, my job is the um, interpretation of the gap. That's my job. Everything else I do at Real Life Trading and trading is just purely for fun. It's a, it's a career, it's a mission, I absolutely love it. Everything else is an interpretation of this gap. That's my job is I try to determine what this gap says and I do that by asking usually the question, if I were in this trade, how would I be feeling right now? If I got into that trade yesterday or today, how would I be feeling? And that's the best way for us to determine um, the sentiment of the gap. How would you personally feel if you were in that trade? And if you would feel that way, there's a really, really good chance other people are gonna feel that way too. So we are gonna look at, uh, I'm gonna run through some of these. I might not get through all of them uh, before the market opens in 24 minutes. I'll do my best, but uh, I will sort through a few of these. So what criteria do I look for? That's a very good question. Uh, first criteria to make my watch list is I look for something called volume. Everyone here knows what that is. By the way, I'm writing left-handed today. I'm practicing being ambidextrous. I usually don't spell that terrible. My hand rang is a little bit better than that. Uh, volume, I look for volume. So I try to get it around a million on average per day. If you have a million shares traded on average per day, uh, there's usually very, very good chance you'll be able to buy and sell it. So we'll be able to short it or buy it. Uh, we could trade it with options. The bid ask spread won't be horrible on um, some cases. And obviously it's all about getting filled in your order. So liquidity is always there. That's really what I, that's the, one of the main criteria I look for. Also, I do my best to trade stocks over $5. Um, the reason I do that now we'll day trade some stuff below $5 every now and then if uh, there's a good gap or you know everything looks great i'm not gonna you know tune out a beautiful four dollar gap but i usually usually don't trade stocks that cheap and the reason being is because you can get into a lot of shares really really quickly um and we do tr we do call out all of our trades live so sometimes it's just easier to take the bigger price stocks i guess it's kind of simple Maritia says, Tesla gap down this morning. Yep, Tesla, I thought it was on my list. Uh, I will put it on my list. I almost always look at Tesla, Apple, Netflix, all of those, but I'll definitely check out Tesla for sure. Uh, so there we go. Um, Karen says, anything gapping up? Well, we can go check that out. I can pull this up, and this is our pre-market stock watch list. So we'll probably have a few gap ups. Um, here's a few of them. Mostly, mostly ETFs and pharmaceuticals. <laughs> so let's go check them out. Let's go see what we got. BXLT, which is going to remind me all day of a BLT. I'm almost positive of that. BXLT. All right. Uh, what stock is this? I have no idea. Bax Alta Incorporated. Never heard of it before. No idea what this one's doing. Um... Let's check this out. So this is gapping up. So to answer your question, Karen, um, here's a resistance on ticker symbol BXLT. This is right around $40.25. So we can see this resistance from here and we can see this resistance from right here. So it's gapping up to $40.56, which is approximately this little pink line. Um, now, keep in mind, we have this little resistance right in there. So these little wicks right here, we're not entirely clearing those wicks. So for this to be a gap that I like, uh, I do and would kind of like the stock to be above those wicks, right? Because if anyone who went short back in here um, is going short again, in order for them to be trapped, we really need to be above those wicks. So I'm going to write in... Um, bullish retest gap might fade and by fade I mean trade in the opposite direction of the gap uh, bullish retest gap might fade uh, I would prefer BXLT to open above 41 there we go Pretty much that simple. 
and I will pretty much I'll do the best I can to uh, to put the most of my chats or my notes in the chat pane so that you guys can have them as well. Um, sweet. Do that. Give me three seconds to pull this up. All right, rock on. So there's BXLT. Uh, a few of you guys are calling out some stocks as well. Um, FXCM and then FCAU. Uh, FCAU gaps all the time. Fiat Chrysler automobile. So I'm not going to be too excited about that. Um, but I will check it out. FXCM. This has had a lot of news recently. It's been very, very popular on Twitter. Uh, because really the move from $5 to $22 in about a week and a half. So it's really, really strong move. Uh, F FXCM is a good gap. Uh, the reason I say that is because you have a black candle and it's gapping down. So this is a bearish retest gap and it's gapping to, let's see, the low of Friday was 1632. So I'm actually going to investigate this on the hourly chart just a little bit. Uh, hourly chart and really I'll turn off the moving averages I don't use moving averages super often um, in trading land I will look at them every now and then when I just need to figure out kind of what's going on so we definitely need to get below the low of this candle and we are we are below that gap FXCM is opening below Friday's low now I'm gonna look in the general market in about eight minutes every pretty much the majority of the market's gapping down today, um, which is great. I'm totally fine to play that. And believe it or not, we might make a lot of money today. But the key thing is being patient. I'll, re I'll say that all the time. I say that to my veteran traders on a regular Thursday. It doesn't matter. It's all always about being patient and taking the trade that you like the most or the stock that you like the most and finding out exactly how you feel like playing it. Because what you could do is you could take seven trades and they all blow up in your face and then you've blown out your account for the week or the month or maybe even the year if you went too heavy, <laughs> right? In one day. It's about patience. That's the way you can trade for a long, long time is by being patient. All right, FXCM is opening below for ISO. I like that. Um, it is a bearish retest gap. I will wait for 30 minutes or so and see if we can catch a rollover. Uh, keep in mind 1577 level, 50 EMA is there on the hourly. There we go. Rob, thank you so much. He goes, BXLT, there's, a, there's an acquisition on it. All right, sweet. That's also good to know because acquisitions and mergers, anytime you're going to trade those, it's just kind of like a little bit of a tip from the trading world. Anytime you're trading um, acquisitions and mergers, there's a lot of news. There's a lot of people trading it. Those stocks can get really, really finicky uh, very quickly. So I, I like to be pretty patient on those. Uh, again, Fiat Chrysler Automobile, this is a stock that gaps all the time. Um, I don't know. Okay, so... Gotcha. It's a Ferrari shares spinoff. That's why it's down so much. All right. Got that makes total sense. So Ferrari um, had an IPO about a month ago, as you guys know, give or take. Um, uh, so 887, it's down 36%. It was due to shares spinoffs. So that gap does not mean as much. I will write it down. So maybe we can talk about it uh, later. Definitely we can talk about it on Thursday. Uh, Thursday is transportation Thursday. So let's at least I'm going to write that down and we can check that out. But yeah, that's why it's gapping down. Uh, Ferrari shares spinoff. So that doesn't uh, doesn't mean too terribly much. All right, let's go check out ALJ. Um, an oil and gas gapping down, not shocking. Um, not too shocking, but it is down pretty far. So... When I first looked at this stock, I thought to myself, where would I like the stock to be gapping? And I was looking at right about here with my eyes, and it's down to right about here. It's down pretty far. So I will say ALJ, nice gap, down pretty far. Bearish retest gap, I'll wait a bit. 
been waiting a bit on that. So we've only gone through a few stocks thus far. We have 15 minutes before the market opens. I don't see anything that I'm really, really just super loving it right out the gate. That, in fact, that kind of rarely happens. That's kind of my uh, job, though, is to go through some of these gaps uh, and see if I like them right out the gate. See if we can play them. Otherwise, let's kind of wait. Um, candy Technologies. So we have a white candle from Thursday, and the stock is gapping down to 10.06. That actually is a relatively decent gap. Volume is a tad light. It's around 600,000 on average, so it doesn't make me just fall in love with the gap, but it is a good gap and go. Here's the hourly chart. And again, what I was liking about this is we definitely gapped below where we would have our stop. Let's say you were in this trade. Let's say you played the trade like this, right? You bought in at that support and you're looking to go long. Well, the stock is gapping down here and it's also gapping below there. I think both of those locations you would have your, um, you'd have your stop there. So I like the location of KNDI a lot. Looks like it will trap people. Some selling from the prior candle and lighter volume. Be careful, but a good one to watch. All right, a good one to watch. There we go. KNDI. Uh, we got Weight Watchers, Joe Proman, awesome name, Weight Watchers. So I had a put sale on uh, Weight Watchers, which expired worthless by the skin of my teeth. Um, so Weight Watchers, good to go. Right now it's 2125. 21, it's an okay gap. Yeah, not too bad. So you have a black candle, gapping down. So it will be a bearish retest gap. It's not clearing any pivots. And by pivots, I would really love it to be opening below the 1230 candle, December 30th. So if it was opening about 2039, that would really, really be trapping some people. Um, I will do this. Nice bearish retest gap. Not clearing any pivots, but let's keep an eye on it. Clearing. I'll learn how to spell one day. WTW. Right on Joe. Thanks for throwing that out my way. We never know what uh, what trades can shape up. Now, here's what's interesting. Here's a little bit of a rule that myself and Brad have uh, for our watch list. And again, this is one of the reasons I like bringing this up on Mentorship Monday, just so you guys kind of know my quirkiness. Every trader uh, is kind of quirky, right? We're all a little bit eccentric. Most traders are pretty weird. <laughs> uh, I think I, I think I maxed out the weird list a long time ago. Um, anyway, we build a watch list and as long as the stock is still on the watch list, we can trade it. If I take a stock off at any point on this list, I am not going to trade it for the rest of the day. So once it, once I take it off, I'm, I'm not going to trade it that day. I can add something I've never added to the list before in the late afternoon maybe and trade that. But if it's on here this morning and I end up taking it off, I'm not trading it that the rest of the day. That's just what I do. And you know, you'll hear a lot of traders say that and because and the reason because they the reason they say that is their main objective is just to be disciplined. Traders objective is to be disciplined, to to do the same thing all the time, every time, regardless if it makes sense to other people or not. We're not trading other people's money, we're trading our money. And our objective is to do the same thing all the time, every time. So it doesn't matter if your rules are quirky, if they're weird, if they're strange, as long as you always do them, that's that's really what matters. Right? Just, just do them all the time, every time. Because in trading, the less variables you can have, the more consistent you can be. So the market's always changing every single day. So if you can decrease variables, in trading, you can then begin to increase the consistency in which you do things. So speaking of consistency, um, every morning that I'm calling the open, 8.20 a.m. my time, a.k.a. 9.20 Eastern, is when I look at 
SPY and Apple specifically because I do trade those all the time. So let's go look at the SPY. So the market's down big. We know this. So right now it's at 237, which is right about here. Here's what I'm going to think today. Um, this crazy this might sound. Uh, SPY gapping down. I think it will find some support down here and bounce. Regardless, it's a bearish retest gap. Retest gap. I'll be patient. Patient at these levels for a day trade. I'll be very patient, in fact. Very patient. For a swing, SPY needs to close below 199.50. Then retest. So I'm going to be very patient on the swing level. Um, on the day trade level, again, we're down 1.68%, pretty far down to bearish retest gap. I'm absolutely fine with that, but why do I think we could bounce here? As crazy as it might sound, why do I think we could bounce here? Um, well, we've bounced this exact price two times before. So Karen says, what about long? Yeah, exactly. This is the exact place that we've bounced before. So if you're looking to long SPY here, or if you're looking to go bullish at some point, I understand that. So the trigger, I'd probably wait for the first five minute candle. If the five minute candle closes, you know, whatever color, and then we break the high of the five minute, I'd probably go bullish and set the stop maybe around 199.50. So this, that would kind of be my risk right about there for a long trade. And then I'd look for this gap to fill a little bit. I'm not saying the gap will fill absolutely, but I do think today we get a little bit of a lower wick. Um, I think we get some buying pressure. Totally is just a guess, but it is a bearish retest gap. And I mean, the SPY on bearish retest gaps, it retests often. So we'll see. We'll find out what it does. I don't think we're going to day trade it today, but I will keep an eye on it uh, very closely. But we're just, I'm going to be very patient if I'm trading anything uh, on SPY. Now, Apple. Apple is gapping down uh, very nicely. Uh, it did break my mustard covered apple price. And you guys will all get a piece of that action sometime this week. The great news is on Apple, it is gapping down to a phenomenal location, about 103. So I'm going to get this off the screen. That's all going to happen. Here's my analysis on Apple. Um, as of a few days ago, it, you know, obviously I said it might bounce. Monday. If it doesn't, I really think it's the catalyst for some lower lows and a horrible Apple experience, meaning that I had to eat some eat some apple covered mustard. Uh, looking bearish unless Monday and Tuesday are bullish, which we're not. A close below 105.90 will be a strong bearish sign. We did close below 105.90 on Thursday. I'll be prepared to unravel my bull put spread next week if needed and likely get into another bear call spread. So Apple, I'm going to leave that analysis on here because it's perfect and uh, Got into some Apple positions on Thursday um, as a close, close below my price point there. Apple is a very nice bearish retest gap. A lot of room for movement. Be cautious, but if the rollover is nice, we can play it. Options are fine. I, I have no problem playing options on Apple. I'm just writing that down mostly for me. Um, I would prefer a retest of 106-ish uh, for the swing level. So again, to, to swing trade, it might not make it back up there, but you never know, it's Apple. Apple can do anything it wants, right? So I do want a little bit of a retest on Apple, but it's absolutely going on our list. Um, it's going to be a good trade. We have a lot of stocks open right now on our watch list. I will go ahead and say I'm I'm with Maria. Maria said earlier, I'm not in love this morning. I haven't seen anything that I'm just going to be taking out the gate 
a lot of the market's gapping down. I probably will give the market just a few minutes to see you know, what it's gonna do and if it's gonna shake anything up. Um, and we'll keep an eye on things as it progresses through the day. Remember, there's always opportunities to trade. Tesla is gapping down. It's gapping down to 231, but it's not clearing any pivots for me. Uh, so Maritzi was asking about, is it a gap and go? It is a gap and go. It's a white candle gapping down, but it's not clearing any pivots. The pivot that it would need to clear is right here, about 225 for me to really, really like bearish, um, a bearish move on Tesla. So I'm gonna say Tesla, nice bearish gap and go, but not clearing any pivots. Edge is bearish, but I'll wait to see if there's any trade out there. I will say another buddy of mine, uh, Eric, don't know if he's here today or not. He's probably looking for something a little bit later. Uh, he did get into a what's called a jade lizard. Uh, really, all it is is a bear call spread and a naked put. So just keep that in mind uh, that he did that. I think I actually forget the expiration. I think it's a January. But notice this little trend line here on Tesla, my friends. Check this bad boy out. So notice this high, this high, this high, and notice where we came in. Boop, right about there. So if you're looking to do any trade on, on Tesla, there probably is a relatively decent opportunity uh, to get into maybe a bear call spread potentially. Um, like I said, 245, 250, 250, 255, something like that. So just kind of keep that analysis in mind. Eric uh, is in a bear call spread with a 190 put sale. So it's really, really far away, but just, just something to keep in mind. So let me move. Let me move my. Um, so far, the best the best gaps that we've looked at that I like the most would be in this order. Uh, K and DI and Apple. We haven't obviously looked at everything on this list, but we will momentarily. Netflix. So Netflix is a solid gap. Um, our good friend Brian Bodie and other really solid trader was in a bull put spread that expired last week. Support is right about here on Netflix, and it's gapping down to 108.75. 108.75 is right about here. So ladies and gentlemen, type in a one if this is clearing a pivot. I'll go ahead and type in a one, because it is. It is absolutely clearing a pivot. Where is the pivot, Newsom? It is right here. How do I know that? Because that's exactly where it stopped last time, right? There's the resistance. So old resistance, old resistance, new support right there. And it's gapping below the 100 simple and it's taking out the low of this bullish candle right there. So I think Netflix, Netflix is a really solid bearish retest gap. Options are fine. I think Netflix pulls back into the 200 SMA on the daily where we might be able to buy it. Um, not necessarily today. Doesn't have to happen today. Doesn't have to happen today. Market opens in just a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen, and right now I have nothing open as far as uh, trades. I have nothing set up. It's a very, very bearish day, uh, at least right now. There's blood in the streets. Wait for your setup, wait for it to come to you. I will go through these gaps um, as I see fit, but a lot of them and the market are bearish retest gaps. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the videos out there. How long do I usually wait before I play a bearish retest gap? Usually wait about 30 minutes. So watching the market is totally fine. Just because the market is open does not mean you have to trade. One of the hardest things to do, yet the most crucial thing to do is, as you'll see this abbreviation, S-O-H, sit on hands. It's one of the most important things you can possibly learn how to do as a trader. Because if you don't have money, you don't have money to trade with. Just something to keep in mind. So. I think that there's gonna be some interesting selling. I just don't know exactly what time it's gonna come into the markets. Obviously, 
you know, we're down pretty big right now, and uh, there's a lot of retest gaps. So today could gap down and get bought all day. So I'll wait for that to happen and see if that happens, but um, I'm going to keep a close eye on a few things and just see what it goes down. All right, sweet. Well, what we can do is go through some of these other gaps that are out here and just kind of take a sneak peek at them and just kind of jot down what we may uh, want to look at. CSIQ, which is the ticker for Canadian Solar, is down about 5.39%. Let me see if I can pull up that chart. Uh, sometimes trading view does go a little slow. You guys will hear me make fun of tra uh, trading view on the regular. Races, let the carnage begin. Yes, let it begin. So Canadian solar um, down to twenty-seven dollars and forty-nine cents. It's a relatively decent gap. Uh, relatively decent gap. So white candle gaps down. Canadian Solar will probably trade into 2681. 2681. Um, yeah, it's a really solid gap. I don't think we're going to be able to play it necessarily. The reason I say it's a nice gap is because you had two little white candles come in uh, last two days, a little bit of a flag. And it did just barely clear that very, very small pivot. And then it'll probably trade to the 200. Risk reward's not gonna be there though. I can already look at it and tell. I mean, at best it'd be a one to one. Let's see what DPLO is doing. DPLO is a $33 stock. Uh, this is a pretty decent gap. Diplomat Pharmacy Incorporated. So you had some white candles come in and uh, yeah, not too bad. $32.39 would be a target. It is below the 100 and 200 simple moving average, which I don't have on the chart that often for um, day trading. Here's your five minute candle. The five minute candles coming in is relatively bearish. I do prefer if um, if a stock gaps down. I will say this: if the, the if there is a bearish um, day, bearish gap, I like to see white candles in the first five minutes. That way, if we break the low of the day, we know we have a little bit of edge left. If we just black candle gaps down to a black candle that just keeps trading down, I feel like I'm losing my edge. I'm losing like a really good place to get in and uh, I usually don't, I usually just keep waiting. There will be days, ladies and gentlemen, when a lot of you guys maybe decide to join the floor uh, this week or later for next week, there will be days that we won't take any trades. That's going to happen. That's the mark of a really good trader. Uh, some days you're not gonna trade. Maybe it's just one day a month, but there will be days where it happens. If you don't find anything, don't rush. In fact, I challenge you guys to have one day in your trades where you don't place a trade. Because here's what I'm looking for. When I'm going through a trade, I'm looking for minimum one to three risk reward ratio. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to say, all right, if I get in here and place my stop here, can the trade move three times that size? So in the morning, I mean, without any other data on the chart, you have to see a lot of information. Um, before I can really make that determination sometimes. All right, KKR investments. Let me check this out on the daily chart. Daily chart. That's actually a pretty good gap as well. And that one's just barely clearing a pivot and you had those two white candles in a row. Here's the pivot right there on KKR. That one has a lot of room to move. Here's the five minute. And I was just talking about how I like to see a white candle in the first five minutes. I don't know if we're gonna get that on KKR. We might get a retest. Still waiting, but it's pretty nice. Lily says up or down move. Uh, on what, Lily? Up or down move on, on what? Um, cores. 
Ticker symbol TAP. All of you guys like this stock, right? Nice little consolidation right here. There's your consolidation. Didn't really clear any of those pivots. Probably won't trade TAP, but I'll leave it on the chart for a while. Just in case something interesting shapes up, but I don't uh, see much going on. Yahoo. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more bearish if Yahoo closes below $32. I would have to take, uh, the, when I say close blow, I literally mean by the end of today. So the end of day, if Yahoo closes blow there, but that's a pretty bearish gap on Yahoo, folks. Again, this is a pivot right here. Very, very strong pivot. So close blow there is going to be relatively bearish. Um, <clears throat> VRX, what is VRX doing? VRX. Hmm, not yet. Not, uh, it did gap down into a white candle, but the white candle is pretty large. It's almost $2, so it's a big, big candle. So I'll leave VRX on there, but uh, I think that might, I might end up taking that one off. Almost looks like a bear trap to me. You're making some higher lows in here with some pretty decent volume. So here's some good bullish volume, here's some good bullish volume. There's some good bullish volume. You did have two small white candles and it did gap down. Absolutely could roll over. And the trend is bearish. I'm not going to deny that. VRX, um, intermediate trend or longer term trend. We are bearish and we are below the moving averages. So I think it's worth leaving on the chart for right now. We'll see if it rolls over. Uh, FXCM. Is going to be down and did trade into about 1577, which is that uh, that 50 EMA on the hourly. So it gapped down and is trading a little bit lower. So the edge is bearish on FXC. I'm not going to deny that at all. Here's the five minute chart, and the five minute chart just gapped down, opened, and traded right into a support. So again, this little area right here is about the 50 EMA on the hourly. I still do like that gap though. It's not bad. Not bad. Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers down uh, six and a half percent. You have a really nice small candle here on Weight Watchers. I do like that. I do. I like this nice little indecision candle, right? So the stock gapped down and you have a cute little indecision candle. It's not too big. You know, so that trade setup would only be about 30 cents max of a stop. And we know Weight Watchers can move farther than that. Um, I wasn't floored by this gap, and that's probably why I'm not going to take the trade yet. What's the low of this candle? 21.20. And the 10 EMA is at 21.17. I'll keep giving a little bit of time. That's not too bad, right there in the five minute. All right, right on. Still waiting. Uh, my boy Timmy says he likes Lulu as a swing. And that's the other thing, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. We can we can be flexible. I'll look at day trades all day long, but we're 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 here together uh, until two Eastern. That's a long day. It's a long day. So Lulu is gapping up. A lot of you guys are asking earlier, what's gapping up since the market was down? Lulu is gapping up. So what Timmy is saying is he likes this as a swing trade, right? You had a nice little flag pattern right here. Stock gapped up. And let's wait to see what that does towards the end of the day, Timmy. But that is absolutely one to put in the afternoon swing trading list, Lulu. I don't want to see how it handles, but you, uh, handles that resistance, but you are correct, man. Uh, maybe an inverted head and shoulders or a double bottom or something down there, breaking out a little bit of a flag pattern. And there's your hourly chart on Lulu. This is why Timmy likes it a lot on Lulu. So again, hourly chart is a time frame that I live and die by on our swing trades. Really, really want to focus on the hourlies. Uh, check out these candles, ladies and gentlemen. I have a lot of new traders here today, so let's, uh, let's throw out a quiz question. What type of gap is this on Lulu on the hourly chart? Ticker symbol L-U-L-U. -L -U. What type of gap is that? 
Lily said it's a gap up. That is true. It is a gap up. There's a gap up. What's a, what's a specific name for it? Timmy says it's a bullish gap. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I like to call it a gap and go. So Michael and Maritzi got it right, and Stephen King got it right. Yep, I like to call that a gap and go. Now, again, keep in mind, we could call that whatever we want. We could call that the Iron Battleship, right? The name doesn't matter. The names of gaps do not matter. You can call them whatever you want. As long as you can understand why that's a bullish gap, that's the important thing. So it is a bullish gap on the hourly chart. Now, am I saying that Lulu's going to go to 70 tomorrow? No, not saying that. This $54.36 is a resistance. So you have a resistance price, you have a gap and go on the hourly, but the daily chart is a bullish retest gap. So likely what you would wait on is this, this, and then this. So could you begin to plan this trade for the future? Yes or no? Could you, could you look at this gap and be able to plan that trade for the future? And the, and the answer is absolutely yes. Sure. That's what you want to do. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of times when I was taking trades back in, back when I was wet behind the ears, as Dennis called me a few times, when I was wet behind the ears just trading, um, I would get into the trade then, like, like now. So I would look at this trade, right? I would look into this trade right here on Lulu, and I would get in. Just, oh, it's a bullish gap. Boom, boom. And I would get in. And a lot of people do that. But if it's a swing trade, meaning you're literally going to be in this trade for hours, days, or weeks, maybe even months, or possibly even years, you probably should give it a little bit of time. The best traders will plan out their trade for the future. So instead of getting into the trade now, don't worry about the now because the now is already happening. If you trade the now, one of my sayings is if you trade the now, you're going to be emotional. If you trade the future, you can be disciplined. And that's the important key. That's the key. If you can trade the now, you can be emotional. If you trade the future, you can be disciplined. So Lulu, I'm writing it down for the future. Not gonna keep, uh, not gonna lose track of that one. Uh, it, is a, it is a decent gap and it does look like it can go a little bit higher. Dennis says, bull put spread 75.70. Bull put, bull put on Lulu, Dennis, or something else? You might mean 50, 50, 55, I'm not sure. But yes, a bull put spread, that uh, doesn't look bad. Agreed. Victor is throwing out ticker symbol T and also Southwest Airlines. Let's look at AT&T. AT&T, it is list worthy. Right, black candle gapping down. I had to go three days without cell phone usage uh, because of uh, this wager that I had on AT&T. So this was, I made this one way, way, way back on the 23rd of June. And uh, it just didn't work. <laughs> so I lost that wager. Ironically enough, I just happened to decide to do that over the Christmas break. So I didn't, it didn't get that bad. But I did have 563 text messages when I came back. All right, AT&T and Southwest Airlines. Let's see Southwest. I do like Southwest bearish. Oh man, that is gonna be, that is absolutely a list worthy gap without question. Type in, type in the number six if you can see the pivot that Southwest Airlines cleared. Type in the six. I'll type in a six. All right, a lot of sixes. Yeah, all right. Yep, it cleared a pivot. So does this have some edge? The answer is yes. Either, either as a day trade or a swing trade. It could be either or both. We can do some, we can do both. Again, folks, let me just remind you, my, my, my job today, uh, my, my mission, my goal, follow my trading plan. That's what I care about. My goal is to follow my trading plan. If I only make one R today, that's okay. One R a day will keep the doctor away. Patience, be calm, be cool, be collected. But here's the pivot that it gapped below, number one. Number two, the other pivot, it's a little bit more sneaky, but it's there. Cap action. 
right there. That was a bullish gap and go back in October. And we have now gapped below that gap. So the fact that we're gapping below this gap, which we can see people bought that gap, we can see that, this is a pretty good gap on Southwest. Longer term, I'm just gonna pull up the long term moving averages just to see where they are. And we're below the 100. All right. So it's a black candle to bearish retest gap. So again, let's just hypothetically say this happens on Southwest. Could you come up with a plan to go bearish on the retest? on Southwest? And the answer would be yes, right? Trade the future, don't, don't trade the present, trade the future. Come up with a plan, so that way, if you trade the present, the market is controlling you, ladies and gentlemen. That's one of the big, if you're here for today and today only, and you really soak that in, my, I will be happy. If you trade the right now, the market is in control of you. If you say, hey, market, this is what I want you to do. And then if the market does that, and then if you follow your plan, you, my friend, are being disciplined. And that's the point. That's the key. That is the key. Nolan Olson, who is joining us permanently. I saw that come in earlier today. Thanks, Nolan, for that, man. Uh, he says, American Airlines is short last week. What do you think? I think you're a wizard, and I would like your magic spell. If you don't mind, maybe maybe send me um, a container or a vial of your magic spell. <laughs> uh, true story though, great great trade. I can see exactly why you did it, and I had uh, two or three other traders who trade American Airlines, short American Airlines last week as well. Um, trade right into the one the 200 simple moving average that red line, and it's and it just failed gorgeously. So I would say fantastic job. It is a bearish retest gap today. Here's the support level. So I would say, depending on how many shares you have, um, Nolan, and depending on your ultimate target and your ultimate risk, I would say you're at target one right now because this is a support. We have bounced here before right at this level. So I would say this is target one, target two, 38. This is out of half already, beautiful. All right, I would take the rest in the 38 then. On the hourly chart, I think this looks pretty bearish. Here's your hourly. Hourly, oh man, that looks, good heavens, that's a beautiful gap on the hourly chart. Do you guys see that? Look at this flag pattern on the hourly. Nice little flag pattern and the stock is gapping down below the pivot, below that support. Hold on to that one for a little bit, man. Let, the, let that winner run. So a lot of airlines moving today, I guess is what we're saying. A lot of airlines are moving. JetBlue moving. Um, got out of that put sale by the, the hair on my chin. Is that the way that goes? So JetBlue breaking support. A lot of gaps on a lot of airlines. A lot of gaps in the market is really what we're saying. <laughs> Steven says the airlines are flying. Exactly, yes, airlines are flying. So let's go check out our boys, Apple and Netflix. Uh, Netflix is really getting just taken to the woodshed right now. So Apple, cute little white candle at the moment. Not super insanely shocking, honestly. I'm not saying this will happen, ladies and gentlemen, but I will say if it does, if this goes on on Apple, I'm gonna short it. I'll short it right there, boop, about 106. I could be wrong. My job is not to worry about if I'm wrong though. What is our job as traders, ladies and gentlemen? Our number one job, can you guys remind me? Our number, our, our Uno. Uno Trabajo, our one job, follow our trading plan. That is your one job, all right? Because minimizing risk, making money, doing all of those things, those are gonna be a subset of following your trading plan. All right, mitigating risk, that is a very, very important part of your trading plan. It needs to be 
in your trading plan, without question. But your number one job is to follow your trading plan because you can follow your plan and still lose money. You can follow your trading plan and still have incorrect analysis. But if you follow your plan, you can at least be consistent. So minimize that risk, incredibly, incredibly important. So Netflix, gorgeous gap, right? I mean, that's very, very pretty. A lot of things are moving a little bit too, uh, a little bit too fast right now, but here's, here's a possible retest. So again, Netflix is on my radar. It's on my radar. Not sure if this happens or not, folks, but if it does, I will trade that bearish right there today. <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if it does, I'm going I'm to I'm get with it. So market's been open 21 minutes. Haven't placed any trades yet. That's going to happen. Now, if you're wondering, Jeremy, do you just do you talk this much all the time? The answer is pretty much yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Even and we could trade 100 trades in a day. I'm still going to talk a lot. I just like to talk. I'm a chatty Kathy. I need to come up with a chatty Kathy, but for Jeremy. Jabbering Jeremy. Is that, is that one? I'm not sure. Um, all right. Now, Tesla has gotten some moves on it now. So now we have broken some support. So the Tesla's also moving. So Tesla came out the gate. So Tesla, um, Apple, Netflix, all very markety stocks. And by markety, I mean just kind of general market stocks. Um, is this a tweezer top on Tesla? Uh, this is two cents away from a tweezer top which you have a white candle and then a black candle is coming in with about a, with a relative high. That's actually a little bit interesting because again, it did gap down. Maurizio was saying, hey, is this a bearish gap? And it is a bearish gap without question. It didn't clear any pivots, but it's, it's about to. Tesla remaining on my list. My boy DK watching Google. Let's go check out Google. Google, yes. Let Google pull back some. Mm -hmm. So Google, I can put Google on their list. I mean, we can keep an eye on, on the majority of those. Amazon, Google, all the big stocks. I really, truly think Amazon and Google pull back a little bit more. Let me guys tell you my synopsis of why I think they, they pull back a little bit more. Is Here was an all-time high breakout. And I don't know if any of you guys have been tracking what we've been chatting about in the last 2015, but all time high breakouts have been horrible all year. Literally, the, one of the most easiest shorts of 2015 is find a stock that's breaking out with an all time high and short it. I think it was only three or four times that didn't work in 2015. It's kind of crazy. So anyway, that's exactly what Amazon did, right? White candle, gapped up, all-time high breakout, bullish retest gap. Mm, gorgeous. So a few traders got into a bear call spread. Uh, it was counter trend, not denying that. So I didn't personally get in there. That's why my name's not in that list. But great retest gap on Amazon. So really your Amazon, your Netflix, your Google, your Apple, your Tesla, find the one that you like the most and play it how you see fit. I like the fact that Amazon's pulling back. Uh, you had an evening star reversal pattern also at the all time high and the stock is gapping down and coming into the 50 exponential moving average. So keep in mind that Amazon's 50 EMA on the daily chart is $645. Will we bounce off of there? I'm not entirely sure. Could we? Yes. Will we? Probably. I guess we'll have to. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but I did buy to close this January put sale on the day that we broke out. 
So I had a put sale on Amazon and when it broke out, the day it made the all time high, I did buy to close that. That was part of my plan. I followed my plan, pretty excited that I did that. Um, Cause it just, just following my plan. That was great. All right, we have a lot of trades. A lot, still have a lot of stocks. I'm gonna go through and clean this list up in a little bit. Let me go over to BXLT. And I'm gonna determine if we're gonna take this one off. Yeah, I'm gonna take this one off for right now. So here's why I'm taking off BXLT. There's a lot of uh, news on it about uh, collaboration buyouts possibly, and it gapped up. It's a bullish retest gap, and it gapped up right into resistance. And uh, I think I think I can take that one off. Intel, INTC. Intel looks kind of a little bit like SPY. Um, what I mean by that is it's breaking down below the 50 exponential moving average. Absolutely worth putting on this list. Notice how it's breaking this little short term support right here at approximately $33.80. So it is a bearish retest gap, which is fine. Nothing, you know, bearish retest gaps are actually kind of our strongest gaps that we have. Um, yeah, Intel, worth putting on the list. INTC. Yossi, is that how you pronounce your name? That's a cool name. Yossi. Let me check the Intel out on the five minute chart here for just a moment. Again, what I'm looking for, the market now has been open 30 minutes. So I'm starting to look for some of these retests to come in. Um, Intel did already have a retest. So it's a little on the quick side. But this one is a, I like this gap. I'm gonna give it a little bit of time because we're kind of far away from the 10 EMA. So this is the five minute chart on Intel. Notice this little candlestick pattern right here. This is called a bearish rest after battle. There, a bearish rest after battle. So likely that trade will continue. We can come back to this trade. This is not an official trade. I'm writing this one down. So if we can come back to it, we can be ready for it. This would be a limit sell on Intel. So if I'm looking to play this one, here's how I'd like to play this. Boom, boom, boom. Pullback, 10 EMA comes in, and then we short it. That's what I would like to see. So I'll get that in a little bit of time. WSM. WSM, Williams Sonoma, down about a percent. Here's the daily chart. And the daily chart, mm, nice gap. Nice gap, Yossi. Uh, it's a bearish trend, right? Market is treating this one very well. Stock is continuing lower. Um. This one might be a little bit more of a swing trade. It is getting pretty extended though. And what I mean by extended is I'm looking at this trade, I'm thinking to myself, would I be upset about losing money here? Because this stock has gone from 85 to 50 in about six months which is a pretty big sell off for Williams Sonoma. This is a very good swing trade for it to either go bullish or bearish, especially if it forms a perfect doji. So notice how today's candle is right now. If it keeps that candle all day, I think that could be a really good bracket trade. Let me write this one down for the afternoon trade, which, uh, the afternoon trading floor, which again, all of you have access to. It's totally free this week. Every room we have is free. So make sure to tell your friends and fam. Your friends and family. 
I'm gonna wait on this one on the day trade though. It looks it looks a little extended. What I mean by extended again, it just looks like it's moved really really far, and the bearish edge is weak. Because remember, short uh, sell high, buy low. I do like the gap. I think it's just a tad extended, just a little bit. All right. Let me go look at Weight Watchers because Weight Watchers did break some of that support. This was a really, really good five minute candle. So Joe, you're looking at Weight Watchers. Great, great eyes, man. Great, great eyes. Cause this one, I just loved the five minute candles on Weight Watchers. You know, I'll kind of show what I mean. I wasn't f blown away by the daily. Um, five minute actually would have been a little bit tough to play because of the, the bounce right here. Let me kind of zoom in here just a moment on Weight Watchers and kind of kind of show you what I'm talking about. Had Weight Watchers kept these really, really small five minute candles right there. So notice you had a small candle, small candle, and then a giant white candle. Had it kept three or four small candles like that, I would have taken a low of the day break on Weight Watchers. Would have taken a low of the day break. Um, good volume is coming in. If you're watching the one minute chart, uh, look for a retest of about 2120, something like this, and then a rollover about 2120. <laughs> nice, Justin. That was good. That was good. All right, FXCM is still hanging out about 1577, so it did have some support, some support there. VRX, trying to determine if I'm gonna keep or take off VRX. Uh, I think I can keep it for right this moment. It doesn't look bad. If you have a little bit of a one black crow right here on VRX, right there. Um, if we took a break below this low, that would concern me a little bit. I would prefer VRX to trade sideways around 99.22 and then break lower. But it doesn't look like it's gonna do that. Okay. So I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep watching this one. All right. Let's go look at candy K N D I and see if it's worth keeping an eye on. Again, little a little light on the volume, but I think it is doing exactly what we wanted it to do. Again, nice gap down. I love the location of this. Yeah, that's fine. It works. I'll leave it on for now. JD. JD.com. Yes, bearish gap and go, Michael. You are correct. Very nice. Um, also, this one gapped off of a resistance. So 3251 was a strong resistance on JD.com. Nice little gap down. Already has almost 5 million shares traded. It is list worthy, my friend. So right now we're just keep building our list to see if we're gonna find anything to play um, for the rest of the afternoon. I'm also gonna try to see if I can trim this list down. It's getting, it's a little big at the moment, but they're all valuable gaps. I think I can take TC off. Seriously, can you pull up Facebook? Yeah, dog. Facebook, down 3%, pulling into a really nice support on the daily chart. Um, this 9750-ish range. This is a good little level. So again, a nice little gap down today on Facebook. This is gonna be a really weird thing to me, and I promise I didn't draw it exactly this way intentionally. But if Facebook is going to bounce, it needs to be today or tomorrow. Because with with the timing of that wave four. I think it needs to bounce a little bit. Uh, it doesn't have to, but here's the five minute chart on Facebook and the five minute chart on Facebook had a really, really good gap. All right, it gapped down, it did clear some pivots 
And here's that indecision candle that I like a lot. So again, I'll say this as many times as I need to today. Today is a great day to learn, right? It is Mentorship Monday. I'm going a little bit slower than I normally go. So for some of you, you probably feel like I'm going really fast. And I might be. If you have any questions, today is the day to ask. Without question, but <laughs> without question. It's funny. Anyway, when a stock gaps down, doesn't matter if it's a bearish gap and go or a bearish retest gap. What I really like to see is an indecision candle or a white candle for the first five minutes of the day. That's what I like to see. So again, stock gapping down and the first five minute candles, like an indecision candle or a bullish candle. And then I like from there, the entry looks a little bit like this. Bearish below the low, stop above the high, let it ride. And it becomes even a better setup if the next candle is an inside candle. So really on Facebook, this is the way one could have traded that and that would have been good for about two hours. As you guys know, this is the first time for me looking at Facebook today, so I did not take that trade. But that's how I would have played it. And learning what you would have done or could have done if you continue to do that and you have your set of rules and you can do it all the time, that's how good trading is made. So Apple is still hanging out at 102.50, Netflix down to 106.23. Uh, Jeff said, so why do you like to see an indecision candle or white candle in the first five minutes? Uh, the reason I like to see that is on a gap down, it shows um, some buying. So it shows some people saying, oh, this is a good discount. So they start to buy. And then if that candle gets taken out, right, if the low of that bullish or indecision candle in the first five minutes gets taken out, then those buyers give up and then the selling comes in. Obviously not all the time, but I like it when it happens. Trying to find some examples. Tesla, Tesla and Facebook really are the two best examples that I have this morning. Tesla did not open perfectly for me, so that, that's pretty much why we're not in this trade together. Um, didn't open. But let's say that Tesla did clear a pivot. We would be in the trade that by that, right? Just So that would be about right about two hours right about now. So again, Tesla didn't clear a pivot, so the trade has to clear pivots for me to really, really be excited about it. It has to. If it doesn't, I'll, I'll just keep waiting. We can wait all day. I will say this, folks. It's going to be very, very hard for me to short something 10% down. I think the market's going to have a very, very selly morning, and then we might pop the rest of the afternoon. Just throwing that out there. This is a very good chance that might happen. So I'm going to be a tad patient on bearish trades because, again, stocks gapped down and they just sold off. Had Tesla cleared a pivot, boom, boom, that would have been the entry right there. Indecision candle. The next candle is an inside candle, which, is, which shows rest. That shows that uh, it, things are pausing, things are resting. And that gives you even more reason to look a little bit bearish. Great questions, folks. Good stuff. Good analysis. You guys are rocking it. I love it.